I'm Anthony. I've been playing poker for a living since 2019. Hit that intro. Don't slow roll me if you get quad fours, man. You folded King King Jack Jack? You owe me $350. <laughs> Your money should be in there, too. Did you bluff me? Would I, would I ever bluff? I'm leaving out there. I'm on no, tilt. <laughs> tilt. Thank you, sir. I would not lie to you, sir. I told you I had a full house. Doing the Lord's work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> In this episode, I'm down in San Antonio, Texas at Rounders Card Club during their 1.5 million guaranteed series, including a $1,400 main event with a $1 million guarantee. I did fire the main event and uncharacteristically busted very early in the 200-400 level. An opponent on my direct right had been limping a ton. I had raised him multiple times and he had folded pre-flop. In this hand, he was in the cutoff and he raised first in. Given how he had just been limping in all night, when I looked down at pocket nines on the button, I didn't feel like raising him was a good play. I expected at best to be coin flipping and potentially dominated. So I just called his raise and one of the blinds came along as well. The flop was 2-3-4 rainbow. He continued firing and I couldn't fold just yet. I made the call. The player in the blinds folded. I began chanting in my head, nine, nine, nine. And I was ecstatic when the nine of clubs fell off on the turn. My opponent continued betting the turn and I opted to raise as a flush draw had materialized. And if he had ace king of clubs, I was going to make him pay for it. But then my opponent re-raised me. I figured he had to be overplaying aces or kings on this relatively dry board. And given stack and pot sizes, I got it in. He snap called and I was showing the bad news. He had raised pre-flop with 6-5 off suit and he flopped the nuts, and I hit the perfect turn card to think I had outdrawn his aces. Having busted early in the Hold'em streets, I decided to try my luck over the next few days playing Big O, which is 5-card Pot Limit Omaha High Low. The action was amazing, so let's get into it. I'm on the button holding Ace-3, 3-7-8, double suited in diamonds and clubs, but not to my ace. There's three limpers, I call, and the blinds check, so we take a flop six-handed. The flop comes down king 4 2 with two clubs. When it's checked to me, I have a crappy club draw, but I do have the nut low draw, and I do block half the threes in the deck from someone else having it. I bet the full pot of $30. There's one caller, and then another player makes it 130 I make the call, as does the other player, and we're going three ways to a turn. The turn is the eight of clubs. When it checks to me, I've made the nut low and a weak flush. Still, I can put pressure on non-nut flushes here if they don't have a low as well, so I bet the full pot of 420. The original raiser just calls, and I only have $40 behind. The river is the jack of diamonds, and I get the rest of the chips in. He calls and turns over 2248 jack, having flopped a bottom set and allowing himself to get free rolled by me on the turn to secure the full double up. There's a $25 straddle on the button, and we're in the plus one position holding ace queen 953. Double suited in clubs and spades. There's one caller, we call, and we go five ways to a flop, which falls 10 9 7 with two diamonds. There's a $5 bet. Yes, you heard that correct. Someone bet $5 into a pot with 125 in it. Being half Jewish, I can't pass up a bargain this good, and I make the call. I feel like I'm being milked. <laughs> Going five ways to a turn. It could, yeah, he could get punished. We don't know. The turn is the eight of spades. It's checked around. The river is the jack of clubs. Is it on me? Or? Oh, it's me. I'll just go on. Can't go on. You can make I mean, I'll go on. Whatever I got. It's probably about one. My opponent on the right hems and haws and goes all in. Usually this is a sign of strength when an opponent is feigning disinterest, but their bet says otherwise. But at the same time, I've rivered the second nuts. Although this is a game where every player is dealt five cards. He could have king queen here. He bets 160, and I make the call. And I feel like he's got the nuts too, but no, I don't. Oh, you don't? I got the straight to the queen. Both have the straight to the queen. All right, that's it. But fortunately for us, he holds queen ten in his hand as well, and we're going to get the chop. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. There's a couple of limpers, and in middle position, we come along with ace two, four, king, king, suited in spades to our four. We're going to a flop eight handed, which falls king, seven, five, rainbow. I flop the nut low draw with a backup card for counterfeit protection, plus top set, although this board presents some concerns of straight draws. When it's checked to me, I bet the full pot of $40. 
I don't like it, as I have a huge hand and I don't really mind others coming along, so I should probably bet somewhere in the 15 to 20 range and pull them in. Who are we kidding? This is Texas. People don't fold in Texas. I get two callers. Hold my wine, bitches! The turn is the five of clubs, giving me the nut full house. When it's checked to me, now I wise up and I make a bet to keep my opponents chasing, betting only $60. It works, and I pick up one caller. The river is the eight of diamonds, bringing in the front door low, and giving me nut second nut. Poker Jesus about to get you paid! My opponent announces pot, betting right into me. Music to my fucking ears. Ha <laughs> ha, you fool! You fell victim to one of the classic blunders! I shovel in my last 625. My opponent calls, and we're getting the full scoop when they turn over 2568 Jack, having gone runner runner to make a smaller full house and a bad low. Pot. Oh, yeah. See if you want to call the all in. Are you calling? Is that a call? I got King's full and the nut low. Skip it up. Thank you. You're doing the Lord's work, sir. Thank you. That's for you, sir. Thank you. I just remembered I uh, I have to perform a surgery in 20 minutes. So I gotta go. Anyone got a rack? Anyone got a rack? The button is straddled to ten dollars. And I'm in the small blind with ace two, three, four, four, suited in spades to my four. While my flush possibilities suck, I have an absolute monster hand for low, and I want to pull in as many players as possible to juice the side of the pot I hope to win. We take a flop five ways, which falls ace queen eight with two spades. Being first act, we check, but unfortunately it's checked around. Maybe a small bet of 10 to 15 is warranted here to juice the pot since people just don't fold the small bets a lot of the time. The turn is the jack of spades giving us a shitty flush, and some hope we can make our low on the river. The button now bets 50, and I call as does a player behind me, so we're going three ways to a river. The river is the five of diamonds bringing in our low, and allowing us to bet it, plus our bad flush. Surprisingly, they both surrender, and we'll take the whole thing down. There is a $15 raise, and I call on the button holding ace-queen, 10-8-3, double suited in diamonds and spades, the big blind comes along, and we go three ways to a flop, which falls ace seven four with two spades. It's checked around, and the turn is the ten of spades. Now a plater leads for $45. I've turned top two pair, a weak flush, and still have some weak low potential as well, so I make the call. The river is the two of hearts. My opponent announces pot, betting 140 and I make the call only to see I'm getting quartered when he turns over ace three, four, eight, nine with nut spades. The live what? Live three. Oh, you got nut spades. Okay. I got, uh, I got the, I guess I'm getting quartered. I got the uh, live three as well, but eight eye spades. So I'm going to show the hand there. He's got me. Nice hand, sir. Yeah, we did move. Uh, well, I had the ace three, I had the live three. I thought he might have gotten counterfeited with that deuce. <laughs> a $15 straddle is on the button, and after a few callers, I announce pot making it 80 with the ultra premium ace ace queen 5 2 double nut suited in diamonds and spades. The button straddle calls. Both limpers come along as well. I just don't command any respect at this table. No respect at all. The flop is Jack 6-6 six, six with two clubs. It's checked around on the flop, and the turn is the seven of diamonds. The button now bets 300. He seems like a competent winning player, but that also means he's certainly capable of attacking weakness when we're all checking to him on both streets. I wind up making the call with my low draw, and ace is up. The river is not what we're looking for, falling the ten of diamonds. I check, and my opponent makes a little bit more than a half pot bet of 500, and I go deep into the tank. Have I show where you fold? To do the, um... Have I show where you fold? I've never heard that. Uh, <laughs> he said I've never heard that. <laughs> I haven't either. I've heard a lot of shit talking to me, but I ain't never heard that one. He's <laughs> come on. No, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I might, I might hero here. I just got aces up. 
together. Oh, you know that. And I made more points. And that's the that's. All right, I'm gonna hero. Is same jacks are better. Oh, or what is it? Yeah. Cool. Shut up. You got eight nine. Oh, you got the, all right. Jacks full. That'll do it too. Oh, you have my ace too. All right, nice hand, nice hand. Oh yeah. That's a good con. The button is straddled to 15, and there's one caller. Then a raise to 65, and in the cutoff, I look down at a very playable ace-2, 358, double suited in diamonds and hearts. The straddle folds, the limper calls, and we're going three ways to a flop, which is 753 with two hearts. I flop the nut low, but without any real backup, bottom two pair, and a weak flush draw. There's a pot size bet of 215, and when it gets to me, I'm hoping to isolate someone else with the nut low that's behind my two pair plus flush draw, so I repot. And then the two players left in the hand also get their stacks in. So I'm all in for 845 effective, but they actually have less. The shortest stack is all in for 385, and we do have a side pot of $70 with the other player as I have them both covered. The board runs out the queen of spades and the jack of diamonds, and the guy with no low draw, just the nut flush draw, goes runner runner to make a better two pair to take the high part of the hand from me, while I share the low with the other opponent, meaning I'll be the one getting quartered. Oh. Alright, there we go. Gabe. That was like Greg. I don't know why I always forget his name. Right. So, so I got two pair on the nut low. Yep. I got two pair and queen jack. Queen jack. Okay. So that's between y'all two, so. Ah, oh, goddammit. And then, so is it a three quarter for you over here? You got two pair. Uh, we. On this, on this pot right here. Uh, I get three quarters of the side pot because yeah, the side pot. Yeah, I got the high. Yep. But we're getting yep. quartered. We're getting quartered by right. his Queen Jack running. Oh, he had the nut flush draw. That's some ounce. Ah, yeah. I thought right. that was really a good one for me. Mm. You had the world. I mean, yeah. all right, you're gonna have to tip him because I got fucked on this one. Yeah. <laughs> but he's he's working for it, man. <laughs> you look like a winner, Bill. You look yeah. like a winner. He wanted to give it to you. Cool. There you go. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll give you one for the work, even though you cost me money. <laughs> the $15 button straddle is on, and in the big blind, I have Ace King, Jack 10 5, double suited in spades and clubs. We go four ways to a flop, which is Queen 8 6 with two spades. I flop the nut flush draw, but my low draw is weak, and it's easy to wind up free rolled while playing for half the pot. So I exercise pot control and I check. It's checked down to the button, who bets 50. I make the call and we wind up going heads up. The turn is the 10 of clubs, completing the jack 9 straight, but also giving me a nice wrap draw to go with my spade flush draw, and I pick up a club flush draw as well. Just an absolute monster spot. Now I can hit 9, 10, jack, king, or ace, plus clubs or spades that don't pair the board. I opt to take the aggressive option betting the pot of 160, my opponent shoves all in for 325, I make the call. The river is a red queen giving me the nut broadway straight, and my unfortunate opponent reveals he had a straight already on the turn, showing down queen jack, jack 9-8. So he blocked my straight and flush draws significantly, but I managed to still find the river card I need to bust him. Turn was a was a big one for me. Yeah, so we get there. Nuts. Okay. Ace jack. Oh wow, you had the straight. Jesus. I mean, I had both flush draws and I had the... Oh, I had the yeah, and I had the... We're down to four-handed play. In the cutoff, I pot to 20, holding ace-king. Queen-8-5 suited in spades to my ace. The big blind defends, and we see a flop of king-queen-3 rainbow, giving me top two pair and some backdoor possibilities. Now my opponent starts talking. That's not you. 45. Let's let you know. How much does he have left? Two or five, yep. Pot. Pot is going to be... It is me. <laughs> oh. All right, I got top two. Let's, um... Two, ace, jack. Yep. Oh, my God. He fucking... Yeah. All right, some grand total. Uh, 250. 250. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Maybe on top two. Oh, you get 250. Is all it is. 250. Yeah. All right. Nice on. Nice on. 
The button has straddled to 10. In the small blind, I look down at King King Jack Jack 4, suited in hearts to my king, and I make the call. We go four-handed to a flop of Jack 3-2 with two clubs. Since the game is shorthanded, I have to bet the pot here for 45. However, in Big O, top set isn't as strong as it is in PLO. And on a coordinated flop like this that presents flush, straight, and low draws, usually want to play it less aggressively, since in this spot I have no low potential in my hand, and I'm out of position. It's easy to get into a spot here where I'm being free-rolled, and I can best win only half the pot, but my opponent could scoop me with straights or flushes. Only the button calls, and we go heads up to a turn. The turn is the nine of diamonds, which is good for me. I bet the pot of 135, and my opponent calls. The river is the king of diamonds, giving me a bigger set. And while I no longer have the nuts, since as straight as possible, it is more likely my opponent was chasing a low or a flush draw, rather than hitting a backdoor straight. I expect to be good here, but it's not impossible for my opponent to have held queen 10 as part of his five card hand, so I check for pocket troll, and to give him a chance to bluff as well, if he missed, but maybe he thinks I was betting a low and flush draw that whiffed as well. He announces all in, but he only has $100 left, so I have a pretty easy call anyway given the size of the pot. He turns over pocket eights, and he doesn't show the rest of his hand, and we're good. We're still four-handed, and I'm on the button holding ace-king, queen, seven, three, suited in clubs to my king. I raise to 20, and the small blind and big blind both defend. The flop is jack, ten, four, rainbow. In this spot, I flop the top wrap of the straight draw. Any nine, queen, king, or ace will give me the nuts. In addition, I have backdoor second nut clubs and backdoor low potential as well. However, when my opponents check, I decide to take an unconventional line given my hand strength on this flop, and I check it back. I want my opponents to think all I had was a low-oriented hand, so that may encourage them to fire bluffs at me on later streets when I have the goods, since I flop pretty strong. The turn is less cooperative, coming the three of hearts. The small blind fires out a pot size bet of 60, and the big blind calls. I come along as well. Poker Jesus about to nut all over this bitch. The river falls the queen of spades. Bingo, bango, bongo. <laughs> well, now, that worked out well. When both of my opponents check, I opt to bet the full pot of 240. Since I checked the flop, and just called the turn, my hand could look very easily like a busted low draw that's just trying to steal the pot. And it might get me looked up much lighter if they have two pair or better. Unfortunately, they don't have enough to look me up, but... We do take down another pot. Hey, it's Anthony. Thank you guys for watching. I did manage to book a win of $1,074 at Big O. And I've actually been studying Big O a lot more recently, ever since Greg Vale was doing commentary on the Rounders live stream. And I'm going to have a special announcement coming up right after this, as well as some additional footage from my time in San Antonio. So thanks again for tuning in. And here we go. Tonight, Tuesday, March 28th, I'll be in the booth doing commentary for the 5-5 round of each game, half no limit hold'em, half pot limit Omaha, featuring Poker Traveler, Big Daddy Chaz, Rocket Roger, John George, and more. And if this clip from last week is any indication, the action is going to be nuts, so you won't want to miss it. Well, I, I think pretty much the basic answer that applies to almost every situation closer is it depends. A lot of variables. That's why you know. What was nice about Rounders was that they had real food you could order off a menu. A lot of the rooms in Austin are like, we have snacks. Well, I'm sorry, buddy, but a bag of chips doesn't cut it when I'm playing a full session. In addition. Jen and I visited the Japanese tea garden nearby, which despite the cold and rainy weather, was still a sight to behold. Meanwhile, we also took the cats with us to the Airbnb house we rented, and they quickly settled in. You know, after watching a video like this, sometimes I'll like it, sometimes I'll leave a comment, and sometimes I'll subscribe. Sometimes I'll even do all three.